So let's talk about adapting Nintendo Switch Joy-Con type joysticks. Now, much of my work, you see me use these older PlayStation or Xbox style analog sticks for the custom joysticks I make. They're robust, easily available, cheap. You can get them on Amazon in packs of tens and twenties. There's two main challenges for a lot of folks though. One is the size. If you're making a handheld, um, some folks have very limited grip and just can't handle this range of motion. This is a very long range of motion for someone who maybe doesn't have that much range. So while it's a good stick, easy to work with, very, very easy to work with. Uh, it has its limitations. The other, the other thing is the tension on this. These sticks are usually very tight. Now, I know there's a reason for this. Most gamers want very tight, precise movements on the sticks. Not so hot for folks who can't move a stick very far so that they kind of fall apart. One of the options I've seen and people have asked for is using a Joy-Con style stick, which is smaller, quite a bit smaller, as you can see. Uh, it's much shorter. If you've seen a Nintendo Joy-Con stick, this is the stick. It also has a lot less tension on it, so it is easier to move through its range. Very helpful. The problem is, it's a real drag to work with. First off, it does not have the nice big connectors, either headers, you know, 0.1 inch headers, 2 point, or 0.525, whatever the math is, millimeter headers like these sticks do. It's got these lovely ribbon cables, which are a real drag. You can't solder to them, obviously. They are 0 0.5 millimeters on center, which makes them very small. There are five conductors in there. So it's got left, right, up, down. Well, X, Y, positive, negative, and push button. So what you have to do is you have to use a connector for this. And they have these little connectors. And they even have breakout boards and you say, hooray, this is, this is great, but it's not so great because Nintendo being Nintendo, I love them, but sometimes they drive me crazy, uh, uses five pins, not six. If you look at these pre-made breakout boards on Amazon, for example, or most of the other sites, they're all six pin. All right. So the connector is six, which is... You could try to get it to work, but it's going to slide around and you're not going to have good contacts and that just becomes a disaster. So what I've ended up doing, and I still have not had a solid solution yet, but I have purchased a variety of these connectors and I just got a package from DigiKey yesterday of an, another set of, of Molex brand that looked the most promising. Uh, to try out the different connectors. Some of them connect from the top, some from the bottom, some both. They, you can get these converter boards bare, but again, they sell six pin versions of these, not five pin. So you got to align the five pin connector onto the six pin and just ignore pin number six, obviously. So Look at all these. They all look great. Well, they, these are all failures <clears throat> of one type or another because of the soldering. You can't use a soldering iron really effectively on these. They have to be hot air or uh, uh, what's the, when they use the heated plate, I can't remember the term right now, soldered, reflow soldered. So you put solder paste, which is a different kind of thing and a whole problem on its own in super, super teeny tiny amounts, and I mean tiny, this is microscope work, and 
then you hit it in my case you hit it with I use a hot air soldering device that heats up the whole area with hot air and the solder paste magically melts and feeds into the area well in theory magically uh, I don't have a steady enough hand or a small enough dropper to actually get good solder joints on this stuff I've melted ones I have watch the hot air gun blow the piece off so i had to make a jig to hold it in place this has been a real trial and tribulation thing um, at some point i'm hoping to get a consistent output of them and then you have to see, figure out which connector this ribbon only has the connections on the one side which is kind of the shinier well they're both shiny sides but one side has the connector so you got to make sure that that's mated in the correct direction on this slide it in lock it fold it over whoa let me tell you it has been a treat and by treat i mean horrible for something as simple as an analog stick it's really quite annoying the target here is something like this a very small or as small as I can make it I really can't go any smaller than this using these commercial off-the-shelf parts between the joystick and the breakout board which you've been which I've been just crying about and of course you need to take those raw sensor values and turn it into something a game system can read so you need a microcontroller in there like some of my other joysticks I use the Arduino Leonardo also, aka the micro pro um, so you got to get all that stuff in there and here is an example of my closest so far configuration it's a here's a micro pro generic knockoff it's got wire short wires soldered up to the breakout board and then one of my connectors has been soldered to this this is about the best one I've done and then this slides in here everything gets folded over and scrunched into this box so you can see this is about as small as I can make this and it's an, what, a, a two inches or so by an inch by about a half inch tall uh, it's got pretty light tension which is nice the point where I'm at with this is the final assembly has been a drag because even though I have standoffs and everything inside here when I'm folding it over something is getting loose and it's showing weird values and they're hopping all over the place so this is one of those not completely successful situations it's really close and once it works it's going to be fantastic but the big bugaboo here is the sticks themselves which you get you can purchase a set of six or more off of Amazon replacement sticks the sticks themselves throw a lot of values that you won't normally see in joysticks so you're going to have to do mapping and everything in code there's a more code behind all this the connector oh once once you get the connector part done you get that working you're like 90 percent there this is more burned up thrown away parts than probably any recent project i've had so i again i'm i'm hopeful this has been a really frustrating situation because it's like it's just an analog joystick but sometimes it's a lot more than that more to come once uh, I hopefully I'll be able to have a video at some point where this is fully functional and reliable because that's the other thing it's a gaming controller right it, it's got to take abuse it, it's not this fragile little thing it's got to Take a beating. So that's all for now. So there is the most recent update on using a Joy-Con type joystick 
for the Xbox adaptive controller or a PC or anything that takes USB. See you soon.